Welcome back to um, WPF uh, development inside of the C Sharp application development course. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to build on the first video uh, and build a little bit of a, a more complicated application. So, in the first video, what we did is we built a stopwatch, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple kind of data management application. Um, that allows you to uh, kind of add details about a support ticket and then keep track um, of those support tickets. Um, so if you have not watched the first video about the stopwatch, I definitely would, would go do that um, because this application has several uh, additional pieces to it that the stopwatch did not have. Um, and uh, ha not having that experience of seeing the stopwatch might hinder your ability to kind of be able to follow this video. So. What I, I want to do is kind of break the video down into three pieces. So the first piece, we're going to actually go through um, the UI uh, itself and go through the application and see um, kind of the functionality of the application. The second um, part we're going to do is we're going to go through um, kind of rendering and what the UI looks like um, uh, in code, uh, in the XAML, uh, and kind of go through the events. And in the third part, we're going to talk about MVVM, and we're going to talk about how um, we're using view models in the design and the development of this specific application. So to kick off that first part, um, we're going to go really quickly through, um, through the application itself. So when you run this thing, uh, the code is uh, uploaded to Canvas. You can just download it, and as long as you have a PC, um, you can run it right out of the box, and you can click Add New. And this dialog um, basically has uh, three or four main pieces and two buttons. One that is, OK, add this to my list of support tickets, and one that says, cancel. I, this is not a thing that I actually want to pursue. So the first of these boxes is title. So I can give this thing a title, my title. The second is ID. This is a read-only field um, that has a generated ID. And so uh, here is kind of an example of a time where you would be able to use properties and some of the, the kind of rudimentary stuff that we spent a couple of weeks talking about um, in application development uh, proper. The third piece um, is the priority. So here we have a, a drop down that lets you uh, select maybe medium priority for this item and then a description. So the description might be something like um, my computer blue screen and that is bad. Um, so then if you hit OK, uh, what happens is the support ticket is added to your kind of queue of support ticket items. If you uh, want to change that, you can always come in to edit this. Um, when you hit edit, it renders that same secondary window, but now um, all of these controls are bound to properties in a view model that represents this object. Um, so we talked a little bit about object orientation. Um, this list is just a list of support ticket objects. Each of those objects has properties. Each of those properties is bound to um, one of these fields um, on the secondary screen. So here, um, I can change this to a low, or probably, cl probably closer to a high priority. I can hit OK, and this updates um, my high priority uh, thing here. If I wanted to add a new one, um, and I got halfway through it, and something magical happened, my computer wasn't broken anymore, I can always hit Cancel, um, and then that does not add um, a support ticket to my queue. And so that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, I wanted to keep it kind of uh, short and dirty so that we didn't get too complicated uh, in the video. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of um, how to do the, the kind of overview uh, functionality of a, a, a data management system. So um, we can close out of this really quick, um, and I want to walk through um, the UI of the two main windows first. Um, so this is going into that, that sort of second part of the, of the video. So what we have here um, is we have XAML for both windows. We have uh, XAML for the main window. We have XAML for the, the code or the uh, secondary window, the dialog. Uh, so this is the main window. This is the uh, secondary dialog window. Both of these things um, are rendered in XAML exactly like the stopwatch was. Um, here, what we're doing though is we're using a more rigid approach um, to UI development than we did on the first video for the stopwatch. Um, instead of using uh, stack panels and grids as just kind of uh, containers to pour um, UI components into, uh, what we're doing is we're specifying exactly where those UI components should be, not ver by virtue of the order that they are in the XAML, but by um, actually specifying the row and the column um, that uh, they should exist inside of a grid. So 
Um, this is a example of a nested grid. Um, so we have the outside grid. The outside grid is the entire window. Um, so again, you can think of a grid basically as a div uh, inside of HTML. Um, then for that grid, you can specify both rows and columns. And so this outside uh, grid has two columns, uh, or two rows rather. Um, one of them is uh, shorter than the other one. It's got a height set to 50. Uh, and that's because the first row is going to be these buttons. The second row is going to be this list box here. So in the first row, so row index position zero, we actually have another grid. So this thing is a grid inside of the larger grid. And this grid, instead of specifying multiple rows, has specified multiple columns. And so here I have two columns inside of my uh, uppermost grid. Um, each of those is going to have a button in it. And so here inside of the nested grid control, so this is the grid inside of the grid, you can see I have one button that has grid column equals zero. I have another button that has grid column equals one. And they have add new uh, or add new and edit uh, respectively. And uh, we have the click, click handlers exactly like we did for the stopwatch. Then um, for the rest of the application, we have a list box control. And that list box control inhabits the uh, second row or row index one. Um, and so this is the uh, second row um, of the UI. And this is the first row of the UI. Um, and this is the first column of the uppermost grid. This is the second column of the uppermost grid. Um, and we have split, um, we've used a nested grid because otherwise we would have uh, a split down the entire application. We wouldn't actually be able to span columns um, like this. So this is um, a, a very common sort of layout. For um, binding, um, what you'll see is we have uh, the same sort of binding syntax that we did uh, before in the stopwatch application. Um, and we're binding to properties somewhere. And we're going to explore where those properties are bound um, in just a moment uh, when we talk about MVVM. Um, but we have the same, uh, the same syntax. So we have uh, bound um, to the selected item property, which allows us to understand which um, of the items is highlighted effectively, which one has been clicked on. And we have item source uh, being bound to tickets, which gives us the whole list. Um, so this is a, a list property. And this um, is just a single item inside of that list. So this is an object, and this is a list of objects. So what I want to do first, um, before I go to the secondary window, is I want to take a look at the code behind here. Um, so we have um, the uh, constructor, uh, just like we did with the stopwatch. Uh, the constructor has initialized component, which sets up all of your Windows uh, stuff, uh, event handlers and all that. Um, and we have a data context. And here we uh, start deviating in terms of architecture, because instead of saying data context is this, like we did for the stopwatch, we're actually specifying a new main view model to be the data context. Um, so this part is where NDVM starts, uh, because this thing is a view model. Uh, and you're not using the code behind as the view model. Uh, we're kind of decoupling uh, the, the data from the UI. Um, so inside of this, um, we have a whole bunch of click handlers, or in, and by a whole bunch, I mean two. So we have uh, the add new click handler, and we have the edit click handler. Um, and uh, they are slightly different, um, but they have very similar syntax to what we saw with the stop and the restart and the uh, start. Uh, buttons inside of the stopwatch. So this is important um, because this is uh, how you do the construction of a new uh, sort of secondary window. Um, and so we have this thing called support ticket dialog. That support ticket dialog is our secondary window dialog. Um, so we're creating a new one uh, when we add a new ticket. Um, we are passing it nothing because we have nothing to show. Um, and then uh, we are using the dialog.show, um, or so the sort of uh, um, standard kind of like base method to show the actual window. Um, and then uh, once we have uh, completed all of the data entry on that dialog, what's going to happen is the data context for that window, which we're about to, sh to look at, is going to be of shape support ticket. Uh, and then we're going to get that as a result. And then we're going to add that uh, support ticket to our larger uh, list of tickets. And then we're going to go about our business. 
if we uh, are editing, um, instead of uh, passing a nothing, what we do is we go into this uh, secondary method um, and we are going to pass the constructor for support ticket dialog um, exactly the ticket that we have selected. Um, and so here we are looking at the selected ticket on our view model, um, and that is going to allow us to actually render the controls with the appropriate data inside of the controls. Um, from there, we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did up here, right? We're going to show the dialog. And then uh, once we show that dialog, um, we're going to allow the person to do their data entry, uh, modify whatever fields they want, and then um, they're going to pass us back a result. So um, either that result is going to be a support ticket or it's not. Um, and this as keyword is something that people try to use in some cases were very successful using in uh, the programming assignment number two. Um, and basically what this is, is this is safe type coercion uh, is the sort of technical name for it. Um, what is happening here is the data context on a window is of type object. And you can see here in uh, IntelliSense, it's just an object. Um, what this as does is attempts to make this object into this specific uh, static type. And if it is uh, uh, successful in doing so, it will set this result to the appropriate type. If it is not successful in doing that, it will return a null. So as long as I am uh, successful in getting a, uh, a data context from my secondary window that is of shape support ticket, which it should always be, um, I will go into this if statement and basically what I'm doing here is I'm getting the list of tickets that is bound to my list box from my main view model. And then I'm going to look in that list of tickets for a ticket that matches the ID of the result that was sent back to me. So maybe I edited the seventh uh, support ticket, the ID will be seven. And so I'll go and I'll look for uh, the ticket in my list of tickets that has ID seven. Either I'm going to find that or I'm not going to find it. If I don't find it, um, then what, I'm going to, what is going to happen is I'm just going to add it, right? And that's going to be it. And in actuality, um, you could simplify this code to only use this one method. Um, and I kind of implore you to try to work through that if you're interested um, in getting better at WPF um, sort of coding or architecture in general. Um, you can absolutely use this idea um, to collapse these two cases, so the case where um, you're adding a new thing or the case where you're, um, you're editing. In any event, um, if you're adding uh, something that you can't find inside of your list of tickets, um, obviously you're just going to add it. If you do uh, find something in your list of tickets, uh, you're going to get the index of the thing that you found. You're going to remove that old item and you're going to add the new um, sort of edited item that you got back when the uh, secondary window was closed. So um, this result is the new version of that support ticket um, and this uh, updated item uh, that you found in the list of tickets is the old version of the, uh, of the ticket. So if we go over to the support ticket dialog, um, this thing looks um, fairly complicated because it has more um, uh, more elements uh, or UI elements, um, but it is done exactly the same way as the main uh, window. So we have an outside grid. This grid is the entire uh, window. And then inside of that grid, um, I have two rows. Um, and uh, in the top row, I have um, a new grid, and that grid that is in the top row um, has two rows, which give me this row and this row. And then I also have one, two, three, four columns, which give me labels and controls and labels and controls. Um, and then you can see I've got a label and a text box, a label and a text box, a label, and then a combo box. Um, and then I jump out. And I go um, to the uh, next grid row um, in the larger grid. Um, and that is going to be a grid that has um, three rows. Uh, so this part, uh, so let's expand this a little bit. So this top part is the first grid. This bottom part is the second grid, and the second grid has three rows. This is one row, this is the second row, and this is the third row. Um, and you can see that I have um, the label here in the first row, 
I have the actual text box for my content or my description content uh, in the first row. And then in the second row, I have a brand new grid. And now this one only has two columns. And in each of those columns, I have one button, one for OK and one for cancel. And then each of these have a click handler. <clears throat> so in terms of uh, screens, this is probably the most complicated one that we've seen. Um, but it follows the exact same kind of patterns um, that we looked at in main window. So you have a grid, you have several grids inside of that grid, and in each of those nested grids you have some controls like labels or text boxes or buttons or whatever, and you can control their placement by calling grid.column or grid.row and putting them in the correct, uh, the correct place. In terms of binding, um, we have uh, the exact same kind of binding syntax that we've always had. Um, so we have uh, binding here for the description, and each of these things up here, we're binding to the title, we're binding to the ID of the um, element, um, and the combo box is the one um, that is maybe the, uh, maybe the weirdest because we don't see a binding here. Uh, what we're actually gonna do is use the code behind to set this value um, as kind of an example of how you would do that. So um, this um, is probably gonna take just a moment to get your head around. Um, I would just go through it step by step. Um, and if you have questions about it, of course, you can always email me. So if we go into the code behind here, um, this thing has a whole bunch of stuff going on, uh, but we're going to go through it uh, kind of step by step. So here um, we have uh, the default constructor. So the default constructor doesn't take any parameters in. And what it's doing is two main things. It is setting up a new support ticket to be the view model that all of the uh, controls are bound to. So we're setting the data context to, to be this new support ticket. And we are setting the selected value on my priority control to be the selected priority on the view model. Uh, and so again, this is uh, using safe type coercion uh, to get my support ticket uh, that I'm bound to, uh, that this uh, dialog is bound to, I'm getting the selected property, uh, which is just a string. And then I am setting the selected value on the priority control to that bound um, uh, property. So if we go back to the UI, uh, you will see that in the combo box, I have a name. And this name priority control is exactly where priority control is coming from. So if you have controls um, and you want to access those controls in the code behind, you can do so by specifying a name. And then those names will become a property of the underlying class. So um, this class has a property called priority control. Uh, and that is solely because I've given this uh, control a name priority control. And what I'm doing is I'm, select, uh, I'm setting the selected value to be the select priority. Um, the one kind of mystical part of this, um, and this is a perfect example of why uh, WPF is maybe less ideal than something like HTML, um, is you also have to have this selected value path um, set to content, uh, which will then um, look to the content of the, uh, the combo box items um, and bind uh, the actual value uh, to the string. If you don't have uh, this bit right here on the control, um, this will always be blank um, when you render the, the secondary view, even if um, the selected priority is set on the view model. Um, you can um, look at the combo box uh, control itself uh, for a long-winded explanation of why that is, um, and I'll, I'll post a link to, um, to the documentation. Um, it's kind of hilarious. Um, I'm not going to go over it in detail because I think it's going to be overkill and, and kind of lose people. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, um, but at, at this moment, uh, this is just kind of a mystical thing that has to be here um, in order for the thing to work. To go back here. Um, not only do I have a um, default constructor, I also have um, a uh, constructor that takes in a ticket. So here, instead of setting up a new uh, support ticket to be the data context, I simply set the data context to be the ticket that you passed me. Um, so this is the constructor that supports adding a new ticket. This is the constructor that supports adding, uh, editing an existing ticket. Then I have a whole bunch of button clicks um, and I have a window closing event. 
Um, so uh, on the window closing uh, out here, here, um, in the window part, um, I could add uh, is clo or closing. Uh, and so I could add that event uh, here, and then every time the window closed, um, I wouldn't do anything. I haven't done that because it requires um, a little bit more finagling than one would think. Um, but this is um, sort of an example um, that you can add um, uh, event handlers to other events other than just click, um, and it works the exact same way. Um, the difference is the uh, args that are passed to the, uh, to the handler. Um, so here you can see cancel event args. Um, here you can see uh, select and changed event args. Um, then you can put whatever uh, details or business logic inside of the handler you want. So um, speaking of uh, non-click uh, events, uh, if we go back to here, look at our uh, combo box, uh, you can see that the selection changed event um, is uh, set to be handled by combo box underscore selection changed. And if I go to my code behind, um, this is what that looks like. And so what we're doing um, at this point is we are setting the priority um, on the bound view model. Um, so again, this is the uh, data context casted to a support ticket, uh, which is the view model that this whole dialog is bound to. And we're going to set the priority, um, which is an enum, which I'm about to explain. Um, and we're going to set it to the appropriate one. Um, so if the content is low, we're going to set it to low priority. If the uh, content is medium, we're going to set it to medium. If it's high, or if it's anything else, we're going to set it to high. So. Um, we talked about this a little bit in, I think, the second week on the second video, um, but uh, this is the appropriate way to um, kind of do uh, invariant case string matching. So we're using the uh, dot to string on content, which is an object, and then we're saying um, as long as it's any variation of low, um, go ahead and, set, and uh, consider those things equal. This is a best practice um, because you wouldn't necessarily want um, somebody to come in and change um, this to all capital um, or all lowercase and then suddenly the business logic change. Um, so um, these um, should be kind of invariant uh, and that's why we're using ignore case here. Cool. So um, that is a really quick rundown uh, in about 10 minutes of uh, the UI, um, how the UI looks and the events on the, the code behind. Um, and so now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at um, this MVVM stuff uh, and, and try to make that make sense. So in each of these cases of a window, um, we have this data context um, that we are setting uh, to some object, right? And that object can be this, uh, which is, um, well, not this, the actual word, this, um, which is setting it to be um, the class that actually is underneath the UI, or we can set the data context equal to some other object. And in this case, we're setting it to a main view model object. And so uh, one of the main differences in this uh, solution uh, and the solution for the stopwatch is the addition of this view models directory. And so uh, I want to take just a minute and talk about what the heck a view model is. So um, if you think about um, development of an application in kind of three main layers, and this is going to be something that we start talking about heavily uh, next week um, and even more as we go through um, each of the modules going through full stack, um, you can really segment um, tiers into three, at, at minimum three. The first is uh, the database layer. So that's where you're actually storing stuff um, and uh, that could be in a database or it could be on a file uh, system, doesn't really actually matter. Um, those are the uh, deep storage entities um, that represent whatever you're trying to code. So in our case, we would have um, a model called support ticket. Um, and so that model is really just for persistence. It often doesn't have any business logic associated with it. Um, what it truly is for is just data management. It is basically a record in a, a table somewhere um, that tells you all of the specifics of a, uh, a support ticket. Uh, the layer up from that 
is business logic. Um, and so the business logic are basically all of the methods that should be on the entity. Um, and so um, all of the uh, different things that manage the state, um, all of the things that actually bind to the view, um, you don't necessarily need those at the database layer, you only need the data. Um, at the next layer, which are the view models, you need things to bind to UI, you need things to perform business logic, so on and so forth. So while the very first layer that we talked about at the database layer are called models, the next level up are called view models. And the reason is because they interact with the view by exposing properties that you can actually bind to. Then the third layer is the actual view. So the idea of MVVM is you have clear um, separation between the view, the view models, and the models. Um, in this case, we don't have any models because we don't have persistence. And every time I rerun this application, all of my support tickets fly out the window um, and I have to re-enter them over and over and over again. Uh, when we talk about persistence um, in later modules, uh, we will start talking about the difference between mod uh, models and view models. But in that case, what we're going to talk, to, uh, talk about then uh, is in the context of DTOs, our data transfer objects. So view models are really uh, a concept for uh, building um, UI-driven applications like this one. Um, and so what you want to think about is a view model is basically just um, what sits between the actual thing that is stored on disk and the view that the user is actually using to interact with that data. Um, so uh, the separation of those things um, really is based on this data context piece. Um, and the one part of the, the whole UI that I've just sort of uh, explained to you that breaks that uh, separation is this bit. So what is happening here um, is the view model itself um, is telling the control what value it should have. Um, and so this is not strictly um, kind of uh, purist MVVM um, because what we should uh, see here is no code behind um, that is actually actively setting the view. Um, this part should never appear in the code behind if this was truly MVVM. Uh, so that's why I'm saying this is closer to MVVM than previous, um, but trying to actually bind a, uh, a combo box um, to um, a underlying property um, is uh, sort of not worth it um, in the, the time that we have right now. So um, this bit um, is a great example of a piece of MVVM that you might often break, um, and that's kind of okay. Um, it's not awesome to be a purist about everything anyway. Um, but this is the part um, that kind of breaks the paradigm. Everything else um, is very separated, right? So if we um, go to the uh, main view, we see that the binding happens only in the view. We're not actually um, binding anything in the code behind of the view. Um, and all of the logic is actually stored in a model, uh, so on the main view model, um, that is separated from the code behind of that window. Um, so instead of having uh, the tickets property on uh, main view uh, mainview.xaml.cs, we actually have the tickets that were bound to in the UI on the view model and not the view. So if you want to think about it this way, um, the view is actually the XAML and the XAML.cs, um, and the view model is uh, this model right here, and then the model would be whatever we pass off um, to a database to actually be stored. Um, and so a perfect example of something uh, that you would not necessarily want to be stored um, is the selected priority. Um, we actually only care about the priority. You wouldn't want to store what was selected because um, this idea is purely for display. It has nothing to do with the data um, as it is. Um, this uh, is really for view, which makes this a view model and not a model. Okay. So now um, we need to go through each of these view models. So um, this one is the really easy one. So we have two, um, two properties here. We are binding to tickets, which is a list, um, and we are binding to selected ticket, um, which is going to let us uh, pass whichever ticket is selected in this list to the appropriate constructor. Um, and so in our uh, primary constructor or default constructor, all we're doing is we're setting up a new list of tickets. 
Now, um, the one thing to note, I am not using just list here. I am using observable collection. Why am I using observable collection? So observable collection is a, um, a derived class from list that actually implements I notify property change. And if you remember from the stopwatch video, uh, if you did not have I notify property change, what will happen is the, uh, the actual time on the face of the stopwatch would never update. Um, and the same thing would happen here. Um, and so if you want to see that, you can change this to just list here instead of observable collection. What will happen is when you start adding things or editing things in your list, uh, you won't actually get updates. Um, the, the list will stay the same for the duration of the life of the application, and it kind of is not useful. Um, so observable collection automatically fixes all of that. Um, it uses this uh, prefix observable to actually tell you that it is uh, intended to be bound to a UI. Um, that is, the user can observe changes to this list without you actually having to do anything. Um, and so this is uh, one of the more powerful things in .NET specifically for uh, WPF um, use. So this is pretty rudimentary, and if you go to uh, mainview.xaml, um, uh, we can see that we're bound to tickets here uh, in the list. Uh, so this tickets is actually on the main view model. It's this tickets. And if you go to the main view and you look for a selected item, th that is going to be this selected ticket. And so the reason why we need selected, selected ticket again is because we are going to come in here uh, to a show dialog and that selected ticket is going to be the ticket that we pass into the constructor for our secondary view that actually binds all of the view model stuff to the UI uh, for the secondary window. On the more complicated um, side of things, we have the support ticket view model. Um, this has uh, sort of public properties of getters and setters that kind of make sense, uh, the title, the description, the priority. Um, but what it also has is a selected priority um, that we're using to actually set the, um, the value of the combo box um, once you actually see um, the uh, screen render. And so here um, we have only a getter. And if you look at support uh, ticket, uh, no, support ticket dialog um, in your grid row, you're going to see um, uh, this thing um, is going to be set here. Uh, so the selected priority, we're never actually setting it. Um, we are using the priority uh, to return the correct value uh, and set it uh, in the code behind. The next thing we have. Um, is this max ID. Um, notice that this thing is static. Um, so for the 700 and the 800 and the 900 support ticket objects, um, all of the objects are going to share the same max ID. Um, we're going to use that to our advantage um, by saying um, I have an ID here and um, every time I create um, a new uh, support ticket with a constructor, I'm going to set the ID for my new object equal to the next ID. Um, and so here, the private set allows me to set ID inside of the constructor, and then nothing can ever mess with this ID again. Um, and then the get allows me to actually bind this uh, to the UI. And so if you go to the support ticket dialog um, here, you can see that we are bound to the ID. Um, and again, we're bound um, to the, mo uh, the one-time mode or the one-way mode here. Um, and that is because um, we don't want to update this um, every time um, because we're only going to get um, this set one time. We can't ever actually come back in here and modify the ID, uh, which is the correct behavior. That's what you would expect to get. So this um, bit right here is what's uh, implementing um, our kind of rudimentary primary key um, for our entities. You can think about it like that. Um, every new support ticket is going to get a new ID. You're never going to reuse an ID because these things are going to count for forever. And we are using a very simple idea of static uh, uh, fields in this case. Um, to, uh, to fix that. And so we have a public property that uh, is non-static that references a static field, um, and this is kind of a, a popular way of doing it. Um, and so this kind of uses a lot of the, the rudimentary syntax that we've seen so far in the class. The last thing 
um, is uh, every class that you create, support ticket or any of the classes that you've seen so far, always um, inherit from the base object. An object has a two string method. And so what we've done here is we've provided an override to that uh, default um, two string. And instead of returning um, the default, and the default would actually be the name of the class, we're actually gonna return uh, some information about the support ticket itself. And so we're gonna return uh, an interpolated string, and that interpolated string is going to have the priority, it's gonna have the ID, it's gonna have the title and the description. Um, and so if we run that up, you will be able to see title, maybe high priority, description, okay. And this two string method is what's being called um, by the list box control by default um, to show that object. Um, and so by overriding the two string method, um, I can change this display to whatever I want. Um, and I don't actually have to deal with the UI um, code. Um, it's all bound to this object uh, in the view model or this property in the view model. Um, and I can, uh, I can modify it at will, um, whatever uh, syntax I want. So, um, that is the, the long and short of it. Um, we've kind of uh, looked at a whole bunch of different stuff, so I, I implore you to um, take a look at the code. Um, even if you have a Mac and you can't necessarily run it, um, if you uh, go through the code and you have questions about anything that you've seen in the video um, or why a piece of code is there, uh, please let me know um, via email and I'm happy to explain all of that stuff. Um, I apologize for the kind of length of this video. It's um, kind of a hard thing to step through uh, and not ask for feedback in the middle of. Um, so if I've missed something or if you uh, have a bunch of questions, please let me know and I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to go through it. Um, and if you want to uh, come to the meeting tomorrow, um, I'm also happy to go through either of these um, applications and kind of answer questions about them. So thank you very much and I will see you next time.